Hi, welcome to Node Spaghetti. My name is Joseph, and I need to apologize for not uploading any videos the past couple of weeks. I think I might have started this channel a little prematurely. I'm still super busy with all kinds of work, and it's just hard to find the time. Excuses, excuses, excuses. The secondary topic this week is ways to avoid procrastination, because I am a hypocrite. So, without further ado, let's get back to making this cute little octopus friend in Blender 2.81. And just a quick reminder that the last video was about retopologizing the octopus. We stopped just as I was working on the octopus's head. So we're going to keep working on the retopology in this video. Now the first task I've got to do is reduce the poly count a little bit because I just wasn't happy with how high poly everything was at this point. It's healthy as an artist to be able to cut back, destroy, and, uh, and erase the hard work that you've spent the past 8 to 20 hours working on. Uh, it seems counterintuitive, but that's actually how you make rapid progress. It's very simple, really. If you can do it once, you can do it again. And if you're any good, you can do it as many times as you have to. Otherwise, you're not actually any good at it, you just got lucky once. And you shouldn't rely on that. You need to be good enough to do anything you want to do as many times as you want to do it. That's what it means to be a professional. I mean, you can't expect to take people's money unless you can do it on command. Now, now it is pretty normal to be hesitant to destroy your hard work. And there's a bit of experience and wisdom that goes into knowing when to keep it and when to throw it away. But ultimately, sometimes you just have to pull the trigger. And this is really an essential skill, no matter what it is you're making. Whether you're writing a song, or a writing a story, or rigging a character. It doesn't really matter what it is. Sometimes you just gotta get rid of stuff when it's wrong. Now, if you're watching me like a hawk, you're probably noticing that a lot of what I'm doing is, is less than perfect. And that's because, um, just like in other parts of the video, I'm taking a do it now, edit it later, just fix it when it's bad strategy. Um, this was, after all, just a quick weekend project that ended up being a whole series of headaches. There are going to be places where I do something that's kind of bad, and I'll fix it in a later video. In the meantime, I want to share a few of my personal time-tested strategies for avoiding and defeating procrastination. Now, the first thing you need to do is know why you procrastinate. There are typically two reasons why people procrastinate. Number one, the perfectly logical reason, which is... I've got plenty of time, I'm good at it, I don't need to start it yet. And number two, which is anxiety avoidance. And, and let's be honest, it's always anxiety avoidance. That's why you procrastinate. The first thing I always do when I'm up against a problem that is, just feels insurmountable, or maybe a list of problems, is I write down a list of problems, a to-do list. And I sort my problems in order of least stressful to most stressful. Now, if you sort them from most stressful to least stressful, you have the advantage of getting the worst jobs out of the way most quickly, and all of the emotional relief that comes with having that awful stuff off your to-do list. But, the trade-off is that right away you have the problem of you have to start with the most difficult thing that you've been putting off for weeks and weeks that you just can't start. So in order to gain momentum, in order to tackle the problem, I typically start with the easiest tasks that I'm not really afraid to start, and move on to the next most difficult, and so on. And this is essentially the snowball effect, with confidence. The more tasks you complete, the more confident you are about the next task and your ability to complete it. However, in any case, when you're using this strategy, it is very important to absolutely forbid yourself from changing the order of the jobs or doing anything else first. You're not allowed to have any dessert until you've eaten all of your vegetables. What I tend to do is I set aside a specific time or day and decide ahead of time, this is when I will get X job done. And I'm going to do that and I'm going to do just that and I'm not going to do anything else, anything else at all, anytime this week or next week until this gets done. I always schedule well above the amount of time that the job will actually take because I know I'm going to spend more than half of that time just putting it off, twiddling my thumbs, and coming up with excuses not to work. Now the benefit of this method is that it's an inherent carrot and stick. The carrot is the fun work I get to do once I'm done, and the stick is the consequence of failing to do the stressful job 
and this is usually a consequence I can barely even begin to think about. This way, the motivation comes from two different directions. Sometimes I need to sweeten the deal a little bit because I don't feel motivated enough, even still. So, in that situation, what I do is I give myself permission to be a little bit undisciplined, to indulge myself a little bit. Maybe I'll spend a little bit of money that wasn't in the budget, or I'll eat something that's kind of unhealthy. Or I'll buy a nice bottle of whiskey, or a bottle of cheap whiskey, or a bottle of cheap wine, or a case of beer, or some Listerine. Anyways, as long as you don't create a pattern of bad behavior, this is a really good way to get stuff done while keeping your indulgences in moderation. Now, the biggest reward, no matter what, for me, is the knowledge that I've taken a meaningful step to completing a goal that I care about. Often I'm hesitant to do something because it feels meaningless or tedious or boring. So to make it more interesting for myself, I have to fit it into a goal that I care about. I need to change my attitude. It isn't unusual for me that an overwhelming task is something I would normally do for fun quite easily. Why is it so overwhelming then? Because I'm not self-motivated to do it. So, I always try to find a way to align uninteresting jobs with my own internal drive to succeed. Now, sometimes it, it's just kind of pointless to try to keep working. It's 8.30 at night, or it's 9.30, or it's 10.30, or soon enough it's 1.30, and I still haven't gotten anything done. The right thing to do in that situation is, at 8.30, when you know, you know yourself, you know you're not going to do any work, just go to bed. Then, you can just wake up early the next morning and spend the extra time getting stuff done while you're feeling rested and fresh. Another simple way to get started is usually used for driving out writer's block or something like that, but it can help with procrastination also, and that is just put some awful scribble or write something really stupid on the page, or in Blender, make a really bad Suzanne or something. The point is you fill the empty void that's stressing you out with something, anything, just to get it out of the way. So anyways, at this point, I've given myself all kinds of reasons why I have to get it done or I'm screwed. I've given myself permission to do all kinds of fun things once I get it done. And I've got something stupid on the page. I've erased it a couple of times, and I've got something stupid on the page, and I've erased it a couple of times. And I just can't get started. So I enlist my favorite tool of them all, the Mighty List. And I break the problem down into five or ten steps or parts. And I ask myself, can I just do the first part? Can I just get that first part done? And of course I can't, so then I try this. Can I just work on it for five minutes? Can I just open the program or the document or get the paper out or whatever I'm doing? And wh what am I, a man or a mouse? Yeah, I can work for five minutes. Now, by the time I've been working for five minutes, I've overcome the initial panic. And 10 minutes pass, then 15, and soon enough, I've finished much more than I'd ever realistically hoped to. I'm pretty sure I got this strategy from Proko, uh, Stan Prokopenko, whose fun instructional videos I can't recommend highly enough. Go check him out on his YouTube channel or on his website. I'll try to remember to leave a link in the description. One of the reasons why I have trouble uh, getting started is because it doesn't feel right to work just now. I'm sitting around at home, sitting in front of my computer, thinking, why in the hell am I making a video right now when I could be watching South Park? So, inevitably, what I do is I watch South Park for four and a half hours, and before I know it, it's ten o'clock on a Saturday night, and I haven't made the video yet, and it's been two weeks. The problem here is that I am trying to work at home, and the place where I do fun things, the, the play area in my life, is the same place as the work area. For me, this is a barrier to getting stuff done in a psychological way. You know what it's like uh, going through your morning routine, driving to work, sliding your time card in the machine. By the time you get there, you've already buried and mourned for the eight hours you could have spent doing anything else, and there's nothing left to do but just resolve to spend the time there at work doing boring work tasks. Because you have to be there anyways. So, sometimes I try to replicate this morning routine type thing, even when I don't have to leave home. It's really helpful to do your work in a different place entirely than the place where you do fun stuff. 
maybe set up a home office if you have a room for that. Now I unfortunately don't have room for that, so what I tend to do is just take a shower, change my clothes, wear something that I would go to work in, and then when I look down I see that I'm in business mode, not in party mode. It also helps me to do a warm-up activity. What I tend to do is do quick figure sketches in ballpoint pen in a sketchbook or something. And finally, perhaps the most important bit of advice is just sit down and remind yourself it's not that hard. Other people have done it before, other people will do it after, and those people aren't special. You can do anything those people can do, and those people never could have done it if it didn't start out as something easy and approachable. And would you look at that, I've run out of footage. I'm going to try to make the next video a lot quicker to make up for the two weeks that I didn't do anything. So stay tuned and thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a comment, like the video if you want to. I dare not ask you to subscribe after that long, long period of silence. But uh, do what you want.